What's up, guys? Dr. Gabrielle Lyon here and Dr. Donald Lehman. And today we're going to talk to you about fructose. There is a ton of hype in the media about is fruit or fructose bad for you or not? And um, we're going to clear it up for you. So as you know, fructose is a monosaccharide and it's actually metabolized differently than glucose. It's metabolized more like a fat and there is a ton of controversy around it. And Don, I would love your perspective on the metabolism of fructose as it relates to high fructose corn syrup, which is highly processed, but again, still fructose. And then the fructose that is found in say a banana. Yeah. The, I think when one gets into a, a specific nutrient like fructose uh, or protein or vitamin C or water or oxygen, you got to realize that there's a range of optimal nutrition. I mean, whether it's water or oxygen, if you have too little, obviously you die, but you can also have too much and you'll die. And you need to think about things like sugar and fructose in the same way. Um, there's just no way that having, you know, people sometimes want to treat fructose like it's a poison. Well, that means having a single strawberry or a, an apple or a banana, as you suggested, is going to be poison. And clearly that's not the case. So one has to realize that the issue is how much. It's always, the, you know, the poison's in the dose. Right. And, you know, that's having, right. having, even something that we would agree is not very healthy for you, like a soda. Having one soda a month isn't going to really hurt you, but having six in a day is probably going to be a problem. Absolutely. So or, make, or even making it a, a daily habit, having yeah, a soda every day. I mean, day, it's, it's the dose. So great. if you look at the controversy in the literature, almost all the research that shows fructose is super bad for you is really high doses. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with that. I've done research predominantly in, in, in rodents to look at it, but at low levels, it doesn't disrupt metabolism. Uh, and, and frankly, fructose is kind of a, is kind of a fun sugar in, the, in that it's about 1.6 times as sweet as sugar. Mm -hmm. So you can get something like honey, you can get a lot of sweetness without many calories. So right. if you use it effectively, uh, it, can be a good, it can be a good part of a diet. But obviously, if you're having too much of it, uh, it is going to disrupt metabolism. Uh, as you say, it's treated more like a fat. It seems to be one of the main contributors to fatty liver disease right. associated with metabolic syndrome. Right. Uh, and it's part of the things that may help lead to you know, not having normal triglyceride metabolism. Uh, which leads to, you know, elevated triglycerides, again, common in metabolic syndrome. So, you know, it, it has to be viewed as a, as a range of intake. And there's way too many Americans eat, eating way too much fructose, primarily in sodas and sweetened, you know, sweetened foods. Yes. And, I, and that's a really important point, you guys. When you think about fructose, there's some of us that think about it as it relates to fruit, bananas, any kind of uh, fruit has fructose. That's not inherently bad. This idea that that fruit would be bad for you is not true. There are other benefits that perhaps affect human health when it comes to eating fruit. However, I do think that what Don is saying is correct. And we were just talking a bit offline that, you know, from his perspective, all the fructose that you eat gets absorbed. I would say that that is probably totally true. I have seen that the tolerance of fructose is variable. So some individuals can eat more fruit than others. Other, you know, other people get a lot of gastrointestinal distress um, in clinical practice. I've seen that. Really where things become challenging is when you are eating an abnormal amount of fructose and someone's like, okay, well, what's the abnormal amount of fructose? Well, um, I think that that depends on the individual, but when your diet is primarily fruits and vegetables, I think that's going to be very difficult to get an excess of fructose. Don, do you happen to know what an excess number would be? I mean, you could easily get 50 grams a day and be okay. And I think that, you know, yeah, that would I, you be know, I think that um, that would be hard to get, by the way. And I'm talking about 
it's okay from a metabolic perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, a banana, your example, there's around 30 plus 30, 35 grams of fructose in right. a banana. So there's a lot. Um, and so I think most of the evidence is that you need to get above 60 grams before most people are gonna have problems with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, the old commercial that I always remember when I think about bad breakfast are somebody having a highly processed cereal with bananas on top of it and orange juice and arguing that that's a good breakfast. So they're getting probably uh, 120 yeah. grams of carbohydrates with a huge amount of fructose in it from the processed orange juice and the banana. And so that is just setting you up for insulin kinds of problems. And so again, one needs to think about it in the dosage and when you're putting it. So, you know, again, if you having one banana, uh, you know, once a week, that's not going to be a problem. But if you think that a banana a day is a route to health, that's probably a risk you're taking because right. you're getting 35 grams of fructose right up front. Right. So there you guys have it. Um, you should watch fructose, but it doesn't mean that fruit is inherently bad or that fructose is inherently bad. Really, what we're saying is that the dose determines the poison. And there's a place for everything. It is about calorie control. It is about insulin control. It is about optimizing macronutrients. So for the record, Don and I are not against fruit as it relates to fructose or high fructose corn syrup. Is that ideal for health? Um, probably not. Don is much more liberal in you know, being open to consumption of it. But for me, you know, I feel like it's very highly palatable. And, you know, whole foods are often best, but again, fruit is not primarily bad for you and fructose is not. I will add one more thing is that the amount of fructose and the amount of just sugar in our fruits have changed. They're not what they used to be. They've been modified and they've been, you know, they've gone through cycles of agriculture that have certainly changed what we're eating now to what we were eating then. Um, so just be mindful, but again, it's not inherently bad. Anything else you wanted to add? No, I think that's a good point. And, and there's no question that all of our food supply has tended to be oversweetened. Yeah. The, the sensory type people who work for food companies tell them that the sweeter it is, the more people will be addicted to it and the more they'll eat. And so there's no question that there's been added sugar in lots of foods. And as you point out, even the, the fruits that we get have been genetically selected to be sweeter. So no question about all of that. Right. All right, guys, if you like this video, please like it and share it and subscribe. We really appreciate your time. I know how valuable it is. I often go and look at the comments and I try to answer questions. And if there's a particular topic you want to hear about, I would love to know. So you can leave a comment here or you can shoot me an email or send me a DM on Instagram. But other than that, hope you're having a great day great day.